So Comic-Con. tell us how evil you're going next season. Oh, good question. Um, from what I've gathered from the information that they've given me, which isn't a lot, um, I think I think it's going to she's going to play into a lot of sides. You know, and a lot's been taken from this character, Jules. You know, she, she kind of got put through the ringer in the first season. Um, they love to torture me. So uh, I think, you know, she's, she's had a lot taken and she's had a lot happen to her. And now she's even a different person. So I think they're going to play with how she deals in this new environment, how she keeps surviving in this world, in between the two worlds. So it's going to be it's going to be uh, interesting. So I don't know if it's going to be evil necessarily. It might. I think it'll play into that. And and uh, I'm curious myself to find out if it's going to be genuine or if it's going to be because she's playing both sides. So I'm I'm actually curious to see it myself. <laughs> Do you see her growing closer to Takeda? To to her dad? Oh, Hitake. Yeah. Um, I see that happening, although I don't know. I, I, I'm, I think that that started to happen toward the end of last season, that she started to finally have a connection. I mean, it, it was a really beautiful story, the way they set the whole thing up, especially with the hallucination scenes and her dying and discovering who she is because she's fighting so hard for survival. That was one of my favorite parts about the character, her just the will to just keep pummeling through things, and also her, her need to, to, to put her attention into other people, just that... Um, part of what helped her survive was when he stabbed himself to be down there with her because she had somebody to take care of. So because they went through such a horrific experience together, she couldn't help but bond with him. Um, but, you know, he's tricked her and he's cheated her her whole life. It's like, it's still your dad. No matter, you know, it's that thing with parents. It's such a great storyline to put in, into shows because no matter how old you get, your parents, you know, you go back home to visit and suddenly you're 16 again. <laughs> it's like mad or, you know, but it, there's there's just always something there. So it, it's a really beautiful story and um, I think there's there's some connection she has with him, especially because her mom was gone and her mom wasn't who she thought she was either. Um, but I'm not really sure how it's going to play out since the whole base exploded and we're going to see how people uh, deal with Jay's death, you know, how he's going to handle that and, and what she does to keep going. Can you talk about your uh, favorite scene from the first season? Favorite scene? Mm. That's tough. That's really tough. I, uh... I have a number of favorite. I have a number of favorite storylines. I guess I thought the shower scene was wicked. It was awesome, um, and it was fun to shoot. Believe it or not, it, um, I, I thought it was just really interesting. It had a lot of levels to it. But I think one of my favorite things to shoot was the snow room in episode ten when Billy and I are trapped out there with that weird Christmas music and um, that Gunnar McHaleston character downstairs. All that stuff when we were having this like gunfight going on but we're in that weird snow room. I just, it was so much fun. Um, and it was just really interesting. And Jeremiah uh, Chetrick, who directed that one, he directed Christmas Vacation. So when he showed up, I was already a fan of his. I love that movie so much. We all do. <laughs> How can you not love that movie? You should have a Christmas Vacation. Um, and so he's just got this really interesting dark humor that he added to the episode. We hadn't seen that the entire season, and I loved that. So, I mean, when we're sitting there trying to play with the radio, and you get this weird husband and wife, him picking at me, like, well, can I try? And I'm just like, just give me a second, you know, and he just, it was, he just opened up this interesting humor in it that I just thought was so much fun. So I really love shooting that. Yeah. I was going to say, you talk about some of the, I guess, the, the freedom that the, the writers, you know, give you and all the creativity. Because at first, like, when you first introduce you, it's kind of, you know, kind of a standard, like, you know, uh, like love triangle, like, through, yeah. you know, the two guys and, you know, one affair and all that. And then, but in the end, like, you kind of develop into your own, you have your own character, your character goes through. Not yeah. crazy, but have all these hallucinations. And what's it like to just kind of go through all those different levels? Uh, well, I thought that was brilliant, to be honest, because I think that if you, if you have a female character that exists only because of her boyfriend on a show, she's dead in the water. I mean, who cares? You just don't care about her. Um, and that was that was a bit of a fear when I first got the pilot. It was like, okay, what is what is this about? But what was interesting um, that I felt very fortunate for is that they gave me so much more to be worried about than my ex-husband or um, or my ex-husband's brother. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh my God, just don't do that. Um, friends and brothers, just don't. Um, but uh, it was it was smart because my, my storyline was fascinating and it really just became more about who she is and what she wants to do and um, and just discovering her life. It, it just had it was just so much bigger and the virus was so much bigger than this drama. And also she's a grown ass woman, you know, she's not she's not um, she's already accomplished, she's already uh, she's been through the circus, she's been around the world and she's run her awards. Now she just wants to help people do her job and, and do her thing. So although she doesn't know who she is like literally she's trying to figure those things out. I think it's there's a there's a place when you get into um, women in their thirties with characters and in life where it's just this is who I am and I'm good with it. And so now let me try to just deal with the situation right here. And, and that's fun to watch. It's more interesting than, Alan, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> Although we still have to go there. What's her love life going to be like in season two? Uh, I think there's going to be lots of triangles going on in season two. Because people love that. They all want to know. It's true. I get it. Um, <laughs> There's got to be romance. I'm not. I'm not against romance. I'm not saying that. But I, I think what was smart about what they did with it is that a situation would present itself, and then we just wouldn't have time to deal with it. And you got to create angst for the audience too. I think if you just like put it all out on the table, it's just not interesting. It doesn't keep people hooked for a TV show. In film, like let them go ahead and hook up, and it's all tied up in a bow. But you got to keep that potential for something to happen or missed opportunities and that's what's interesting um, but because we're introducing a lot of new characters and um, my character got kidnapped and swept away and so there's going to be some 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 new stuff going on and I think some multiple triangles happening which will satisfy the whole romance aspect of the show I think yeah. So a lot has happened on the show. Um, did you ever receive a script and think, this is so surprising or so... Like, I would imagine you would get the scripts and be really excited, yeah. but was there ever anything that happened here like, wow, I did not expect that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, as far as storyline, I thought the hallucination thing was amazing. Just the little girl and finding her letters on the wall. and That, that whole path was so well done i think it was just so creative and cool and trippy because the audience is following her nobody else no other character do you follow the hallucination you see the virus from the outside and you're not connected to it but by having empathy for her character and being in that it was just that was just an amazing storyline but the aliens scene in episode nine I did not see that coming, and I thought that was awesome. <laughs> and everybody, I mean, there were a lot of people who were kind of afraid of that scene, and they said, you know what, that is just ridiculous, but I thought it was so funny that she just does this horrible joke on him, and the whole, like, ah, coming after him across the table. It was, I just, I loved it, because it was just completely off the wall and bizarre, and it's sci-fi, and you know what, when people are have come out of such a horrible incident like that, they're a little bit crazy, and you need a good laugh. So, <laughs> you know, it's just what happens. Like, after you've been crying for a while, it's like, it's time to giggle. And I just thought that was awesome. I didn't see it coming, though. I thought it was great. So how is it with the contacts? Oh, um, the only day, there was one day I had to wear contacts, which was actually tricky, uh, because it's all CGI, the, the silver eyes. Oh, yeah. But, um, and he does a great job because they look amazing. But um, the only day that I had to wear contacts was in episode six, when I'm basically dying, and it's it's full, it's bizarre. It, you can barely see through it, and it shifts around because it's almost your whole eye. And um, that was actually that was pretty strange because I hadn't been wearing them. I wasn't used to them at all. I don't wear contacts. Um, so while we were while I, was, while I was wearing those, I did the cabin scene with the turkey, and I did the scene where um, I'm basically on the way out and Hero is, wakes up and I have this I'm like sobbing and fighting with him and it was it was tricky because I couldn't see anything so there's part of me technically this is, this is 
freaked me out. Here, what's going on here? Where are you? And, and, and then, and then there's part of you that's just trying to stay in the scene and be connected. So it was that was an interesting challenge, but it was it was fun. But I'm I'm lucky. Neil had to wear that stuff all the time. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, but yeah, the CGI is pretty good on the show. Mm-hmm. They're looming. Is something happening. They want me to unveil it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're wrangling. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. I'm gonna take you right over here.